this episode and it feels like it has been a while. <laughs> um, I did publish, uh, well not a little video, it was quite long, but a uh, August snippet video uh, last week, two weeks ago, uh, it was kind of my vlogist video. Um, yeah, which which was kind of fun, but it wasn't a proper podcast. So today I'm back with a proper podcast. My name is Garmin. Uh, this is the New Leaf podcast, and you can find me on Instagram as newleafdesigns.nl, and I will list the other things right here. Um, I have been so busy uh, dyeing yarn <laughs> for my latest update. You can see some of it right here. <laughs> uh, and I had so much fun coming up with names uh, for the colorways. I was inspired by Stranger Things a lot, so, um, and I will be talking more about the colorways and what's available still in my shop um, more at the end of the episode. Uh, so first off, you know, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Um, and it's, um, it's such a coincidence because the first thing I want to talk about uh, in this podcast episode is a recent finished object of mine. Well, ends are not woven in yet. And I also wanted to talk about a designer and recent events. So my FO is the, and I will show you more uh, later, but it's the Tenya sweater or is it a top? I don't know. I don't call things a sweater when they have short sleeves. But okay, so top t-shirt and I'm super super happy that I finally finished it after it has been on the needles for one and a half year. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm taking this opportunity to also talk about some uh, something that has been happening on social media. Um, and it's kind of hmm, hard to talk about, so bear with me. Uh, so Caitlin Hunter, who's the designer behind Tenya and lots of other uh, amazing patterns, um, she had blocked an anti-racist activist uh, who is Sophia Tron. Um, on Instagram, uh, her Instagram now, her, it, uh, her Instagram handle is Sophia Tron. Her actual name is Sophia Tsai. Um, uh, so, um, you know, people were asking why, and um, today or maybe yesterday, she finally, um, Caitlin finally. Um, uh, gave an apology and an explanation saying that she felt threatened or I'm not sure if the correct uh, or if the actual words uh, and that she uh, therefore blocked Sophia while they had no um, contact before that whatsoever. So there was kind of a confusion about that. Um, but you know, it's, it's not so much about the details, but it's about, you know, if we see something like this happen, what can we do and what can we do in the future and how can we continue to um, see our privilege and um, also sometimes use our privilege to the benefit of BIPOC and the greater uh, humanity uh, because ultimately it's good for everyone. Um, to make sure that everyone is included and heard. And of course, for the last couple of months, uh, there has been a lot going on and it's, um, you know, it's important to hold each other accountable. Um, and, you know, just, just say like, hey, you know what you did there? It's not really nice. Um, you want to talk about it or you want to think about it some more um, but uh, I always feel like as a white woman it's not really my place um, but through recent um, events on social media I have found that sometimes it is my place because um, I have a big platform or you know slightly big platform and uh, I have a voice to 
to give to uh, BIPOC and um, uh, and although I'm not always well I'm not good with voicing my own opinion and or forming my own opinion on things but I, uh, I do want to give others a platform to um, signal boost their opinions and uh, what they have to say um, and I just want to say that even though you might think your voice is small you know if we all chip in no that doesn't sound good if but if we all speak out it can mean a difference um <clears throat> so yeah i just wanted to um say that you know look around on instagram there are a lot of people who are doing some amazing work in, including sophia and caroline from c dick designs including secreta of course um and they all have uh well i think most of them have kofi accounts so you know if we could all just uh, contribute a little bit uh support them with a the kofi then you know it would help to make things sustainable and um pay for their labor basically um yeah so that's you know i i know i'm not eloquent at all and things i say might still be problematic of course but uh i just i didn't want to not say anything uh and i have been silent on this on instagram well just because uh, i learned about um I wanted to wait for Caitlin's response on this, but you know, it's not just this, uh, this issue. It's all, it's also, uh, the issue with Lightning Le Magazine and, you know, you see it all the time. So it's just important that we, uh, understand that we have privilege and that we, um, either become very aware of it and, uh, let it affect our behavior uh, and maybe that we use it to signal boost others uh, and that we use our privilege to make things sustainable for others to contribute to others so I kind of wanted to say that um, and um, as a part of that uh, I am also constantly looking for uh, B -O B -I -P -O -C. God, it's such a difficult word. I mean, or not a difficult word, but you know, with those words that you only see written out mostly, and then you have to say them, and you're like, is it a BIPOC? BIPOC sounds weird. Maybe B I P O C, but then it's so long, and okay. <laughs> but anyway, I'm constantly looking for uh, BIPOC designers, uh, knitters, and um, I want to share more of their work and I also want to contribute, no not contribute, support uh, more of their work. So I'm gonna just be buying more patterns of BIPO BIPOC designers. Oh, I'm just gonna say designers of color. Oh. Uh, so I'm going to be buying more patterns of designers of color. I'm going to be sharing more of, um, of their work to kind of just give them a slightly bigger platform uh, and help, uh, help support their work. So, um, and uh, yeah, amongst other things. So that's one of the tiny steps that I am taking. Um, but if we all take tiny steps, it will be a big step um, in time. So, yeah, so now I feel kind of weird about talking about this FO. Um, but I've been working on it for so long and I feel so proud for finishing it so I do want to talk about it um, and also because I do think people are uh, still making this design and will also still be buying this design probably um, so I just want to be sharing what I have to say uh, on this because I did make some modifications um, and also I want to showcase this amazing yarn 
which is from Chestnut Cabin and it's on her yak base single ply uh, it has yak silk and merino I think if I remember correctly and it's called like cinnamon fudge brownie something like that so and I have been calling it the chocolate rainbow in my mind because there are so many colors in here even though from a distance it just looks brown uh, but there really are a lot of colors in here you see some yellows uh, even some grays and blues and then some reds and uh, yeah so for me it's the chocolate rainbow um, and I used two skeins for this project and I alternated skeins for a bit on the front but not on the back and you can really see um, yeah so it's about here and the skein I'm using on top is much more red much more warm than the uh, skein on the bottom can you see that? So uh, I'm happy that I only did that for the back because I don't really mind. Um, but for the front, uh, I did um, uh, alternate skeins. Uh, and also a bit for the sleeves. So I, um, I just tried to save as much of the first skein as possible and just um, stripe it throughout. But yeah, not for the back. But uh, yeah, in the future I might do that. Um, um, along the whole project. Well, maybe not the lace, but yeah. I really like the lace actually, but uh, I took out all the purl stitches. Um, well, not all. There are still purl stitches in between these columns, but um, in the pattern there are purl stitches here, so there's like a line here and also here and I didn't really like that I just wanted it to be a kind of flowy um, pattern and not have um, horizontal lines as that would not be very flattering for me so I decided to uh, just uh, knit, knit stitches instead of pearls and I think it's really nice and if it wasn't like super hot in here I would be wearing it but, uh, I'm, yeah, it's uh, too warm. So, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't even make sense for me to stand up holding it. So I'm just going to hold it like this. And uh, I will take some uh, photos or wear it on my next podcast when I have woven in all of those ends. Uh, I do think the neckline is a little bit too wide. I chose my bra straps and I'm not sure how I feel about that yet. But yeah. Mm. I think in the pattern there were decreases in the arms. I did not do those and I also picked up more stitches along the sleeve just because I tend to have a, a little bit uh, bigger uh, upper, is it upper arm? arms yeah <laughs> um, and for the rest I don't really know if I modified anything so I removed the purl stitches uh, I did not decrease for the arms and I used more stitches and I think that was it actually I think that was it yeah but I do really like how it came out and um, yeah if this one didn't hadn't taken me such a long time I might be casting on a new one but for now I'm not sure and also there are so many crop tops out there that I want to try um, there's this one by Christina with wolves her Instagram handle is Xtina with wolves and she has Oh, gorgeous pattern um, so I think I might try that and I also have some other patterns uh, I mean other works in progress um, such as the uh, my boy lollipop 
top that I had almost finished and then I had ripped it all out uh, because it was too big um, and now yeah uh, I've uh, I've knit most of the top part and then now I almost need to do the side decreases again but um, it's at this point where I have to knit and then measure, knit, measure, knit, measure. So I can't really knit on it without thinking. So that's why it's kind of in timeout. Um, this one was also in timeout, but I'm very glad it's no longer in timeout. Um, it is the As If Tea by Shay Johnson, who is Knit and Crochet on Instagram. Uh, she is a fabulous designer. Um, and I'm really looking forward to her new designs because she's been sharing some sneak peeks now and then. Um, so, <laughs> this is the As If Tea, oops, just stabbed myself with the needle. Uh, in progress, uh, I, this was in timeout for a couple of weeks and at that point it was an, until here. I had knit until here and um, simply because I didn't know well it was also at that stage that I had to knit and measure uh, to see just how much I would need to do for the remainder of the body um, yeah uh, but I'm glad I uh, started working on it again because it is going so fast and even though it is super hot. I'm still working on it. Um, and, you know, it has mohair, so that's some dedication um, in this hot weather. <laughs> I can't even, uh, I can't even hold it to my, <laughs> to my chest. Um, yeah, so I went to the hairdressers um, last Saturday and I decided I need a project to work on. And... I found this top again and I kind of, you know, kind of eyeballed it. I thought, okay, I have a good, like, few, a few centimeters, a few inches still to add to the body. So I'll just take this. Uh, but then, of course, uh, after an hour or so, I thought, okay, and now I'm at the point where I should start the mohair section. And I just uh, stopped. Um... And then I continued to sit at the hairdressers for two and a half hours, which was not fun without a knitting project. So yeah, always bring enough knitting. Uh, and then when I came home and measured it, I, um, I had done a little bit too much, but I did want this top to be a little bit longer than the pattern states. So, uh, so that was not a problem. Uh, the yarn I'm using, so I'm using two different cakes. Um, not sure if I still have, no, no, I don't. I have a little bit left of the first color, but that's downstairs. So this is a little bit uh, darker, it has more purple, um, I mean more darker purple and some orange as well. And then here it's mostly uh, light purple and blues, uh, and that's this one and basically I'm done with this yarn now even though I have some left so that was I used two cakes of 100 grams um, yeah and now I have completed the mohair section as well and now I need to do the thing for the neck uh, neck band and I need to do the mohair on the back. Uh, and for the neckband, so I have another cake of uh, Aran yarn. It's all by the same dyer, by the way. It's a uh, head wool based, who um, lives very close to me here in the Netherlands. Um, I'll uh, put her Instagram handle here below, head wool based. And uh, so I had a really dark purple skein and then a lighter purple skein. And this one is like more of birthday cake colors. Um, uh, like with more white and more uh, 
cream or like sandy colors and more blue and I think that would be nice to, uh, to just knit the ribbing with for the neck. I think that would be nice uh, as it has a little bit more contrast than the first two skeins. And then I'll use these two for the little uh, ribbon, uh, ribbing on the uh, sleeve cuffs. Yeah. Uh, I made a few modifications. Um, let's see. I cast on for the second size. Uh, but then I found it to be a little bit too big, so uh, I'm knitting the first size now. And I knit for, <clears throat> I think, 10 centimeters longer than what's required. Uh, and also for the uh, mohair section, I decided to not um, knit the mohair double with the uh, iron, weight iron weight yarn but just uh, carry it along on the back. So just as if I was uh, knitting stranded color work. And I like it much better uh, because I don't want the, because um, if you add mohair to a yarn, uh, like to knit with two strands, you kind of, um, uh, changed the color and I didn't want to do that in this case so uh, I just um, knitted stranded and then um, yeah just uh, carried it along the back so that I uh, can use only the Erin yarn um, for this section and I think that worked out quite well uh, there are some places where uh, I will have to adjust it a little bit because I did not tension it correctly where I go from the mohair to the iron weight yarn. Um, yeah, but I think that is uh, easy to fix. Um, yeah, and now I just need to do the mohair section on the back and then uh, the neck and the sleeves. Okay, so still a little bit to go, but um, I'm getting there. I mean, I've knit from the marker to here in just this week, and it's super hot. Let me say that again. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, so I hope to finish this soon, but I don't think I will be able to wear it soon. Although maybe, because next week I will be going to Oslo Strike Festival, so... I don't know what the temperature is over there, so I might be able to wear it there if I finish it in time. Um, but we'll see about that. Because I do have some other things to do besides knitting, sadly. Another project that I have finished and that you, you might have seen in my last video, the little vloggist video, are these socks called Kinda Magic Socks by Wool and the Gang. Uh, and these are really fun to knit, uh, and really quick as well. Um, and they use one ball of uh, Wool and the Gang Kinda Magic yarn, uh, which is a collaboration between Wool and the Gang and Regia. And the idea is that you create leopard print um, on your socks. and. As you can see, it's kind of blotchy, but um, I searched on Instagram for, you know, tips and tricks and stuff, and, uh, but most of the socks actually seem to turn out a little bit blotchy. So, but I'm okay with it. I kind of like them uh, anyway. So... Yeah, for the first sock, I know that I made a mistake um, because, okay, it's like this. So the leopard print shows up when your tension is correct. And um, they say when, you're, when the spots go a little bit 
to the left. When they lean to the left, you're knitting too tight, and when they're leaning to the right, you're le and you're knitting um, too loose. So you can kind of um, adjust your tension. And also at, uh, at the beginning, so these are cuffed down. At the beginning, you have a couple of rows which are meant to be like one row stripes. So if, say, you're knitting the blue stripe and if you're, um, if you can't complete the round, so there are some other color stitches in between, that means that you're not knitting tight enough. So I had to knit really, really tight for these socks. And then, um, the, yeah, kind of seemed to work out. And then I did the heel, and in the pattern they call for an afterthought heel. I did a German short row heel because I want to try my socks on um, when I'm knitting on them. And with the afterthought heel, it's not really easy to do that uh, if you're knitting it cuff down. Also with toe up, actually. So, yeah. So I did a German short row heel. And at the end of a German short row heel, I tend to pick up a stitch uh, on either side to close the gap. Uh, and what I did, and I'm actually not sure on which sock this is, because they look equally bad. <laughs> um, uh, on one of the socks, I forgot to then decrease those two stitches, one on each side. So that really messed with my uh, spots even though I thought I was um, keeping the same tension. But yeah, because of those two extra stitches, the, the leopard spots kind of... Yeah, I think it's this one actually. They turned extra stripey. And yeah, too bad, but yeah, I still like them, so... Um, and then after finishing them, I wore them right away and then I went to someone's house where they have like scratchy flooring and one of the stitches caught on it and snapped and I'm gonna have to repair that it won't be that big of a deal but um yeah it was a shame it was my first time wearing it and it was like oh. <laughs> um yeah, but uh, I do like them. I just wish that the leopard spots would look a little bit better. And, you know, I think they could do better. Uh, Regia have so much experience with uh, uh, Arna and Carlos yarns. And, you know, they always seem to turn out really well. And I thought, well, they could maybe do a better job. Uh, so I would like to see a better leopard print or just more variety. I mean, they could do whatever they want. Uh, you know, I've seen Pac-Man print sock yarn, uh, which is amazing. So, um, yeah, there are so many more opportunities. Okay, I had to let my camera cool down for a bit and also myself. <laughs> Yeah, so short summary, um, really nice socks to knit. Um, you do have to keep an eye on your tension so they're not um, as vanilla as you would like. You cannot leave them for weeks uh, because you need to keep having the same tension throughout the socks. Um, and yeah, I wish the spot design would show a little bit better but it was still a lot of fun to do and I have a new fun pair for my sock drawer which I actually now have so we bought some uh, new closets for the bedroom and now um, I have an actual sock drawer which makes me really excited that was pretty much it for the uh, knitting I have been up to I have also worked on other stuff but I not show you yet. Um, yeah, but I wanted to talk about Oslo Strike Festival, which I will be attending next week. Yes, next week. Um, it's the 6th and no, is it 7th and 8th September? Uh, I thought it was 6th through 8th, but I don't know if I'm 
No. So it's 6th through 8th September, but there's this event on the 6th uh, that I'm not going to, so I will be there on the Saturday and Sunday, which is the 7th and 8th of September. Um, I will be there with my mom. We will be flying over on uh, the Thursday, um, and then just going... Um, to browse a little bit around uh, Oslo on the Friday and then on Saturday we will be at the marketplace um, and on Sunday we will have a workshop in the afternoon by Buku who does uh, punch needle work and um, me and my mom are really into punch needle uh, needle punching so uh, yeah I am really looking forward to that and then we are flying back uh, late on the Monday so um, yeah it's a fun couple of days I'm looking forward to it uh, I don't know many people that are going uh, if you are going and you would like to meet up just uh, um, leave a comment or send me a message I would love to meet up I think I will also be making a little vlog um, uh, yeah, depending on my mom, actually, I'm not sure, um, if she would like that, um, but, uh, yeah, I think I will be making, uh, filming a little bit, uh, and yeah, I'm just really looking forward, um, to see all of the, um, vendors and, um, to be in Norway, uh, and I were also, well, I really want to also visit Pickles in Oslo, um, yeah, just, uh, there, there are a couple of yarn shops in the city, so I'm not sure if, if we'll have time to to visit a couple of them but i i hope so so um yeah let's uh, let's see about that um yeah so uh do follow me on my instagram stories because there you will see most of the um oslo Strikefest coverage i think um yay and then lastly, I wanted to talk about my shop update with hand dyed yarn. Um, so I've been dyeing a lot of yarn in the, the last month and uh, all of the yarns are now up on my website, my own website, not my Etsy store. So uh, my own website, uh, newleafdesigns.nl slash shop, uh, or you can go to newleafdesigns.nl and then you can click on the tab that says shop. And then you have a category which has which uh, says hand dyed yarn. Uh, you can also buy my patterns there, but uh, yeah. Now I've also added my hand dyed yarns. Um, I have moved away from Etsy because they were taking uh, too big of a cut. Uh, it was, um, I thought it was 5%, it was more like 20%. So I decided to stop giving them my money. Um, and yeah, just use my own web shop, which is perfectly fine. I did have some techie problems. Um, I would upload the pictures and then they would all be sideways, stuff like that. And there was some uh, stuff with payment. I had not added any payment options. Uh, very good. <laughs> I have um, dyed up a lot of yarn and some of the yarns are Stranger Things inspired, which um, I'm really like I really like Stranger Things so I have just picking a couple here I have Eleven's Dress actually is this Eleven's Dress no this is Strawberry Blush it's a little bit more pink this is Strawberry Blush these are uh, Eleven's Dress um, from Stranger Things uh, you know the dress with the Peter Pan color she always wears uh, this is my new base, BFL Nylon. Um, it feels so, so soft. I'm actually not quite sure if this is a superwash or not, so I just put non-superwash on the label. So, you know, until I am sure. Um, so that you're extra gentle with it. And this is my 50% wool, 50% um, Rami base, which uh, feels very cottony. Uh, um, a little bit linen-y, but it's, you know, it's softer. So uh, this would be really nice for crochet, actually. 
uh, it's a DK base. Um, we also have Cherry Slurpee <laughs> after Alexi from Stranger Things. Um, and this is my Wool Rami sock yarn base. Uh, so it's an all natural sock, uh, sock yarn, no nylon, no plastic things, just all natural things. Uh, this is my 100% merino base, which takes the color a little bit lighter. Yes. Oops. Um, and then we have Blank Makes You Crazy. Um, I won't tell too much, but this is something that Mike says to Eleven in the third season. And um, yeah, so I really love this color. I, um, I use a cochineal to dye this color and I'm using way more cochineal than I usually would which is why this color is so saturated. Um, it does, you know, it, it uses a lot of cochineal um, so I'm not sure this colorway will be back. You know, all of these are limited of course because I cannot dye exactly the same color but um, yeah, if you like this be quick <laughs> because I'm not sure if this will be back but I do like it a lot uh, I also have this dark green um, yarn which I've called Mirkwood uh, and this is on my wool Rami base this is also on my wool Rami base this the sock yarn one um, and so Mirkwood is the street on which uh, Will goes missing in the first season. Um, and I've used uh, mugwort and iron for this. So I think, yeah, this is my regular mugwort color. No, that's not what I wanted to say. This is what mugwort looks like if you don't modify it. And if you modify it with iron, it looks like this. So yeah, these go together perfectly. This one is called Sage, I think. Yeah, Sage. Um, yeah, I really like this color. It's such a beautiful soft green and then pair it with this moody forest green. It's just, it's just so nice. And um, I have a couple of skeins of the Sage. Um, yeah, I only have one skein of the Markwood, so again, it's all very, very limited edition, but uh, yeah, there is enough in the shop for now, so go ahead and take a look if you want. Uh, and the Sage is also available on the DK base of uh, Wool uh, Rami. Again, just this texture is just lovely just lovely um this is love potion yeah oh just this is the same base again i love it see oh, just i think this would be gorgeous to um to crochet with um or to knit with but i'm thinking like pillows blankets like home deco stuff it is so squishy um or you could use it in a sweater, but I don't have sweater quantities yet because, you know, limited um, options for me. But uh, yeah, you could use it in a color work sweater, for example. Um, let's see. Yes. I have one more. Yeah. Okay. Now this one. <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry, but I'm also not sorry. This is Enzo's at seven. I just, yeah, I just had to go there. I'm sorry, <laughs> but not sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you know, you know, Enzo's at seven. And I just, I just love this color. This is also with cochineal, but then uh, not with an alum mordant, but with cream of tartar mordant, and it makes the color much warmer than uh, usually with cochineal um, or this one I should say so usually with alum it's a uh, much colder and with cream of tartar it's much warmer um, 
Yeah. See, this one is with uh, alum and this with cream of tartar. Um, what one is this called? Oh yeah, this is Love Potion again. Um, so these are called the same, but um, the dye takes differently on this base. It takes up a little less uh, saturated, a little more light. Um, this is my new mohair base, which I really, really like. It's just called Mohair Silk. Uh, I don't have fancy names for my for my bases. I just want to keep it uh, straight, straightforward and simple. Um, this is my Wool Rami Sock Base. So perfect for socks, all natural. Um, here we have more of Eleven's dress. Uh, here we have some ginger. More cherry slurpee, this time on my BFL nylon base. And this is lovely and vibrant. And yeah, so this is the only base with uh, man-made fiber in it. This has nylon in it, but um, yeah, I personally don't don't mind nylon. I just uh, prefer when it's non superwash. Um, and then yeah, this is so I just just have one skein of this colorway. It's a Will the Wise, um, what Will calls himself in Stranger Things. Um, yeah, beautiful purple, uh, kind of well, not not as dark as eggplant, but um, yeah. It's, uh, it's a gorgeous purple. This is 100% merino, super soft. It would be great for uh, blankets or um, uh, garments. Yeah. This is more of Eleven's dress. Uh, now here we have a stray uh, Harry Potter colorway, which is um, Sunshine Daisies Buttermellow. Um, yeah, it's one of my favorite scenes. Uh, and this was dyed with onion skins, actually. I know, such a vibrant color. Yeah, and this is on 100% um, merino and on BFL nylon. So if you want to walk on sunshine, you gotta use this yarn for socks. Then there's some more cherry slurpee, some more sage. Uh, I also have some coral crush. I actually have three skeins of this on the same base. So that could be a nice summer top. Just saying. Um, and, ooh, yes. Okay, I have to put down this yarn. <laughs> So I have another new base. I'm just trying out um, a couple. Uh, I had dyed more on this base, but um, I did an experiment and it failed, so to be continued. So now I only have two. This is a very chunky single ply, and it is thick and thin in places. So it can be like this thin, but also uh, let me find a thick strand, like this thick. And it would be really fun for weaving, for example, but also for knitting. Um, and I have two colors in here. This is Love Potion, and this is Enzo's at seven. Um, yeah. And, And I have some more yellow colorways, uh, which is from my last update. This is Ginger. This is Daffodil. I think this is also Ginger. No, this is Daffodil. And Buttercup. So they are very, very similar, but um, still a little bit different. So, uh, so I gave them different names. So Buttercup. Daffodil and ginger and ginger is the the palest yellow. It's almost like a vanilla um, And this would be great paired with um, other um, Colors so yeah So that's about all uh, I do have some more but uh, yeah, I thought I would uh, 
show you some of the yarns. Uh, yeah, so just go over to my website and newleafdesigns.nl, click shop, and then you will find all of the hand dyed yarns right there. Um, Right, I forgot to say, um, I can offer free shipping on European orders within um, over 35 uh, euros. So over 35 euros, you have free shipping within Europe. Over 60 euros, you have free shipping worldwide. So uh, yeah, just a little treat from me to you and kind of as a, um, yeah, I'm able to do this now because uh, I'm moving away from Etsy. So yeah, use it to your advantage and get that free shipping. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be uh, making a post run this afternoon, but I'm just, I'm just waiting for a delivery to come. So I hope that a delivery comes soon so that I can go to the post office uh, to, to post the orders. Um, but next week I will be in Oslo, so I'm not sure when I will be able to post the next batch. But um, I'll see about that. I'll uh, uh, I'll arrange it. So uh, usually I can um, ship your order within seven weeks, <laughs> within seven days, and then uh, from the uh, from the moment of shipping, it will take uh, up to two weeks for shipping in Europe and up to six weeks. For shipping to um, elsewhere for example the US um, but if you have any questions about your order you can just email me and I and I will um, answer your question um, all right I think that is it for this podcast episode um, I tried to keep it light on the knitting and crocheting front um, because there are so many different things that I'm working on. So I just want to focus on a couple of things uh, so it's not to overwhelm you guys. Uh, but if you want to see more of what I'm up to, you can always follow me on Instagram, which is newleafdesigns.nl. Um, yeah, and you can also follow me on Ravelry. I'm Caramelletje over there, and I will list it again right here. Uh, and as always, a huge thank you to all of my patrons. Uh, you have been so great and um, you make this just, just sustainable for me to do. And um, yeah, your support is really very much appreciated. If you want to support me as a designer, if you want to support the YouTube channel, please uh, go ahead and uh, take a look at my Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash newleafdesigns. And um, yeah, take a look at all of the things I have to offer my patrons. Um, yeah, so that's all from me today. Uh, I hope you all have a very nice couple of weeks until I see you next time. And uh, be sure to follow me on Instagram if you want to see what I'm up to at Oslo Strike Festival. Um, yeah, so thank you all so much for watching. I see you all soon and until next time, bye-bye.